Hey guys, Rock Flamingo here, bringing you my Guild Wars 2 leveling build series, which will feature a video for each of the 9 classes. The reason I'm doing this series is because the vast majority of build videos online seem to be solely focused on endgame meta builds, and I know from my engagement with the Guild Wars community that a lot of you out there want help with some of the more basic elements, so this one is for you guys. In these videos, I'll be going through all of the information you need to make sure your character is as powerful as possible all the way from level 1 to 80. I'll be covering the best weapon types to use for your class, as well as armor stats, runes, utility skills, and specializations. If you've not yet made up your mind which class you want to play, check out the class guide playlist on my channel, where I have a detailed guide on each of the classes to help you make that decision. I'd like to thank you all for your fantastic support I've received on my channel so far, and if you find this content useful, please consider dropping a like and subscribing to be kept up to date on my latest content. You can also follow me on Twitter at Heroic Flamingo, where I'll be posting regular updates as well as doing gem giveaways for you guys. Finally, I just wanted to let you guys know that there are two links in the video description that might interest you. The first one is to sign up for a free Guild Wars 2 account, so if you haven't got an account yet, do give that a click. And the second one is a link to the Guild Wars 2 store page, where you can purchase the Path of Fire expansion and get Heart of Thorns with it for no additional cost. All of these things help support the channel and I thoroughly appreciate it. Without further ado, let's get started. Alright, so let's have a look at the Mesmer leveling build. And the first thing I want to have a look at are the weapons. The weapons are probably the most important choice you're going to make when you're creating your build. Um, obviously they define your first five weapon skills here and then your first five skills on your other bar. So you've got 10 skills, which are gonna be the, you know, the basis of most of your damage, and they're defined by your weapons. So it's important that you make the right choice. There isn't always you know, um, a right and a wrong answer when choosing weapons, but to be honest, the vast majority of classes do have weapons that are particularly better than others, um, especially if you're going for a leveling build where you probably wanna go mainly like towards power and doing as much damage as you can. There's definitely some ones that are better than others. And obviously in this video, I'm gonna give you my opinion of what I think are the best for the Mesmer. So first up, we've got the Great Sword, which is the two-handed sword. This is a must, in my opinion, for pretty much any Mesmer build. It's probably my favorite weapon in the game when you're looking at all the classes. Um, so I definitely recommend it. So the skills that gives you, uh, your number one is Spatial Surge. So shoot a beam at your foe and the further away you are, the more damage you deal. So let me just quickly clarify this actually. Um, if you haven't used it before, the Great Sword on the Mesma is actually a ranged weapon. Um, quite a long range as well. Um, so don't think it's a melee weapon or anything like that. Um, it is a completely ranged weapon. So that's pretty awesome as well. I think that's one of the reasons why it's so cool. Um, but yeah, so your number one, Spatial Surge, and, and like I was saying, the further away you are, the more damage you're going to deal. And it's got a range of 1200, so you can do it from pretty far away. So obviously, that is one that you're going to want to think about when you first go into combat, and if you're quite far away from him, you can use that and um, do a decent amount of damage. It's also a reason to, you know, keep a bit of distance between you and the enemy. Uh, you can see there um, the maximum and minimum damage, and it can hit up to three enemies as well. Your number two on the Great Sword is Mirror Blade, which is throw an illusionary blade that creates a clone at its first target and then bounces to enemies and allies, dealing less damage to foes per hit and granting might to allies. So yeah, this one, like it says, so you're gonna throw the Great Sword and it's gonna bounce between a couple of enemies. So once again, 1200 range, so you can do it from pretty far away. Um, but this is good because it's gonna actually create a clone. Um, and clones, I'll go into um, you know, some more details on the profession mechanics later in the video, but you should probably know by now, um, clones are basically, um, well, they're clones of yourself, which um, you know, join in, in in combat, and you can see how many you've got active here, and um, they're pretty useful because they distract enemies um, away from yourself, uh, so this is gonna create one, so they're like, you know, they look exactly like you as well, so, um, they're pretty cool for that and this um, clone is just going to do a basic attack. It's got a couple of extra effect effects there. Um, 
So it do does less damage as it bounces between the enemies and it grants might to allies. So it buffs your allies as well. It's one of the things that's really popular about the Mesmer actually um, is it is very popular in group situations. So if you're doing dungeons and stuff, you'll probably be quite popular because you've got a lot of um, buffs you can put on your allies. So it's definitely um, something, you know, if you're looking to do some group content as you're leveling, uh, like dungeons and stuff, or just world events, then yeah, I think it's a really good option because people are always going to want you on their team. So your number three is Mind Stab, and this is a ground target ability, which is stab an illusionary greatsword through the ground to cripple foes at your target location. So once again, this is long range, and you can place it wherever you want, and you're stabbing to the ground, and you can see a sword comes out there damages up to five targets in the area and cripples them so this is pretty good to use um, on enemies if they're sort of coming towards you you can use that to damage all the enemies and slow them down um, I'd probably use that and then you can go straight on to your number four um, which I'll show you now your number four is a massive damage skill this is one of the reasons why you want the greatsword and this is your first look at a phantasm ability so this is phantasmal berserker so throw an illusionary greatsword at your foe removing boons from struck enemies and create a phantasm that whirls through foes so as you can see um, a bit like your number two you're going to throw the great sword you're going to remove boons which is good um, but the main thing is that you're going to get this phantasm that whirls through your foes so it basically does like a spinning attack with a great sword right through the middle of them cleaves right through the middle of a group of enemies as you can see removes boons whirling strikes it hits up to five um, targets and it's got a range of 1200 so this is going to be on your target location you want to do this um, ideally if there is more than one enemy on a group of enemies because it will maximize the damage uh, so if you've got a group of enemies here coming towards you you could whack out your number three to cripple them um, obviously you've got your number two as well which you can um, throw at them as well uh, which can put vulnerability on the enemies and then you whack out your number four um, and what that's going to do is it's going to get that um, berserker to just swing through the middle of them and it does loads of damage to everyone who gets caught in the path so that's a really good one as well and um, with all phantasms once it's done that um, once it's done its um, job it then becomes a clone afterwards as well and that's when we can link it in with our shatter skills which will go into a bit later on which which adds to your damage as well number five is illusionary wave so knock back foes with a wave of magical energy um, so this is not necessarily contributing towards your damage so much. So it's probably the uh, the one on this bar that isn't really too amazing. But it's quite useful, um, obviously, if you want enemies to stay away from you. Um, you know, you're a mesmer using, um, you know, you're a scholar professional using light armor. So you're not massively tanky. So it's always useful to have a skill. I'll just show you now. Bam, like that. Literally creates a wave. So anyone in this radius here is going to be knocked back. Um, and then obviously when they're on the floor, <laughs> bam, <laughs> use your number four, use your number two, spam those abilities and do a bunch of damage to them there. So um, that's a good one there to protect yourself as well. So yeah, so that's your first weapon. So like I said, great sword. It definitely, I'd stick this in your build. There's no reason why not to, in my opinion. Uh, so if you're leveling a Mesmer, definitely go with the great sword. This one is really looks really awesome as well. You get some really cool skins on the great sword as well, so uh, that's always a bonus. So for your second weapon set, I have two options for this. There's um, this is the um, dual sword, so two one-handed swords. Um, so this is your probably your first choice option for a leveling build. It's the biggest damage. So in turn, if you're going for just want to do as much damage as possible this is the um the second weapons that you want to use dual swords and um i've got a, a, a ranged option as well if you want to go completely ranged but for now i'll quickly show you this so dual swords um your number one so this is interesting on this one your number one ability is incredibly powerful uh, so you kind of want to use this in between skills uh, when they're on cooldown um make sure you let the um the chain play out so it's a free chain skill so it's going to do your first you can see there mind slash mind gash then mind spike it's going to um slash them make them vulnerable slash them again put more vulnerability on them and then the third one's going to stab them and rip a boon off them and um, does additional damage when the target has no boons so there's quite a lot of like um, um boon rip on this uh 
class as well which you can utilize and that's going to do even more damage if they have no boons um, as you can see it's going to be doing more damage as it goes along as well because you're sticking stacks of vulnerability on the enemy as well uh, as you can see it can hit three targets as well so if they're bunched together um, that's pretty cool and uh, do bear in mind this actually is melee so it's not like the great sword where you can do it from range this is a uh, melee weapon uh, predominantly so as you can see range 130 so you do have to be right up to the enemy so that's something to bear in mind this is the reason why i have got an alternative weapon set for you um if you find yourself you just can't um you know handle being up close and personal with the enemies um with a light armor class uh, it's not like the necromancer it doesn't have you know you can't just go into death shroud and get a whole new set of health so you can find yourself getting uh, killed pretty quick so uh, so that's just something we have to bear in mind but this from a damage point of view this is so good so yeah you can use your number one ability let that play out uh, when your other skills are on cooldown number two another really powerful skill here to be fair uh, so once again you'll be um, really close for them but the good thing about this one um, is that it actually makes you um, like uh, immune to attacks for the second that you're uh, casting it so blurred frenzy strike your foe with a flurry of strikes distorting the space around you making you evade attacks so this hits like eight times doing a bunch of damage so um you have to stand still while doing this as well so just make sure you get up to the enemy and they're not like running away and, and you use this on them because if they all hit all ha eight attacks hit you're going to be doing a bunch of damage and their health is just going to melt uh and like i said blur means that while you're um casting this you'll also be evading all attacks as well uh, so it's like good you can use this instead of a dodge you know it's like an extra dodge that does loads of damage so it's a really good option there and it hits up to three enemies so you'll definitely be utilizing that number three is illusionary leap so this is the clone skill so summon an illusion that leaps at your target crippling them after the initial leap, the clone will execute the mind slash sword chain. Okay, um, so, uh, and there's a second one there which is swap. So effectively, you, you can use this ability and it's going to summon an illusion that leaps at your target. Yep, so um, you're going to shoot um, a clone at them, which cripples them. And then the clone's going to use mind slash uh, sword chain as well, uh, which is this one, which is powerful. Uh, so so that's that's a pretty good ability there. As you can see, six vulnerability on the enemy as well. But what you can do is while that is going on, um, this will become a swap. And if you press that, you'll swap places with your clone and immobilize nearby foes. So once you've used the first one, you'll be able to use swap, which means that you'll um, appear right next to the enemy and immobilize them. So this can be pretty good for getting into combat. Obviously, if you've, you're sitting here on your greatsword and you're attacking uh, from a distance like that, um, and then you want to get close so you can use your um, sword abilities like your blurred frenzy you can press your number three uh, which is going to shoot out your clone and then you press number three again and you're going to um, swap places you can be right up to the enemy and that's when you can use there you go just to demonstrate what that looks like as well it's really quick to hit eight times as well uh, so that will um, so you can get up close and then you can just whack out your blurred frenzy do a bunch of damage and then you know you can do what you want you can maybe roll back and, and do use some range or or you can um utilize some of your other skills which we'll look at now so the offhand um sword uh skills that we've got we've got illusionary repost so this is a blocking skill so this is a defensive skill uh, but can also be used offensively as well if you use it correctly so block your foe and create an illusion when attacked. So um, you've probably come across most classes have skills like this, which are ones that are activated effectively. Uh, you use it and then you want to get hit while using it effectively while channeling it because then you will actually uh, do like a counter attack. So block your foe and create an illusion when attacked. So you press that. So you've got about two and a half seconds, I think it is, to get attacked. And if you do... Uh, you're going to create an illusion um, which is pretty cool and shoot out a bolt that dazes foes in a line so as you can see you can actually use that as well so this is what's pretty cool so ideally you want to use this just when you're about to get attacked because 
that will be the best thing from a time point of view. Because obviously you don't want to be standing there for two and a half seconds, not blocking anything, and you're not doing any damage for that two and a half seconds. So ideally, when they're just trying to hit you, hit your number four, and straight away you'll block and you'll attack them back. Um, which is nice and effective and that's going to add to your DPS so it's definitely worth doing offensively if you can time it correctly so just um, maybe just work on timing that correctly and then it can be quite effective but as you can see you can actually press it a second time and shoot out the bolt um, so you can press that and if you know they're not going to hit you just press it again and shoot out the bolt there um, so perhaps you could just double tap four if you know you're not going to hit, get hit but you still want to utilize the skill and daze the enemies which can obviously be quite effective and then your final skill here is Phantasmal Swordsman, uh, which is perform a sword strike and create an illusion that attacks your foe. If the sword strike hits, you gain might. Okay, so this is another really powerful ability. Generally, Phantasms are really powerful abilities, uh, and this is no exception. Uh, so you're going to create an illusion that attacks your foe, uh, but you're also going to hit with the sword strike. So effectively this is more this is going to be a better skill you can do more damage if you're using it when you're up close so perhaps you can use this use your blurred frenzy and then whack out your phantasmal swordsman so basically you're going to hit the enemy and if you're within melee distance um you're going to gain might as well as as getting a sword strike on them as well but even if you're not um you still be able to summon that illusion uh, you just won't get the sword strike so ideally you want to do as you can see the range is 1200 uh, but you just bear in mind you want to uh, do that um, to an enemy when you're relatively close and that phantasmal swordman will do a bunch of damage um, as well as most of them and then it will become a clone which you can shatter afterwards but obviously stick might on yourself like once again buffing yourself buffs are really important with a mesmer as well you'll find you'll be sticking quite a lot of buffs on yourself if you've uh, set your character up right which just means you're going to do even more damage um, and just bring the enemies down quicker which is quite important as, as I said you've not got masses of armor okay so those are the two weapon uh, sets but what I want to do is I want to show you a ranged alternative um, so I'm just going to switch this over now so this is my ranged alternative so this would generally re replace the double swords if you find that attacking from melee distance is just not working for you it might be that you're doing certain content where you know it's easier to be just ranged which can be the case with some of the pve content in the game or maybe you just feel that you know i think using the swords um takes a little bit more getting used to if you're newer to the game um or if you're having problems staying alive then i would recommend swapping out your double swords and trying this out this is a main hand scepter and an offhand pistol. Um, this isn't something that uh, you see people use all the time, but I've been playing Mesmer a long time and I actually think this is an underrated setup. If you wanna go ranged, um, which is obviously gonna help you stay alive, um, it's very effective. Also, an argument could be made if you're spending more time you know, using your skills uh, and causing damage to the enemy rather than trying to evade attacks um, from melee distance, you can potentially increase your uh, DPS as well. Like I said, for pure damage, you're probably going to want to go with the swords. But, you know, maybe give this a try as well, because I actually spend a lot, probably the majority of my time as a Mesmer using this setup. Uh, maybe I'm a bit lazy, but I think it's quite effective. So let's have a quick look. So your number one skill on the Scepter is the chain skill. So you've got a Bolt, a Blast and a Clone. So you're going to shoot a bolt of energy at your target. Then you're going to shoot a second bolt, and then a third one, you're actually going to deliver an attack um, and summon a clone that casts Effa Bolt. And inflict torment instead if you have the maximum number of illusions. So you can see all of these are inflicting torment as well, so that's a pretty good option. Your number two is another one of these like blocking counter skills like we had on the sword. So this is block the next attack and counter by inflicting torment and creating clones that cast Effa Bolt. Uh, and then you like I said once again you've got a couple of seconds to use that but you can use counter spell see if you don't you can just use that and you can shoot that out anyway so it's the same as that other blocking one on the offhand sword um, and the bolt that you send out blinds enemies in a line and summons a clone to attack the first fire which strikes okay so your number three 
is a pretty good damage ability. So um, this is channel a beam of energy that damages and confuses your foe. So it's going to do a, a nice amount of damage to be fair, as well as sticking confusion on the enemy, which does more damage and causes them like extra damage when they use abilities and, and, and skills and stuff. And it can hit up to five enemies. So it's sort of like channels the beam through up to five enemies so that can be a really effective one and i'll show you how that you know you can link that up as like part of a of quite a, a devastating chain of skills your number four is a fan phantasm ability um which is phantasmal duelist so um fire multiple crippling bullets at your target and summon an illusion that unloads its pistols on your target so once again really good damage on this one so you're summoning a phantasm which does like rapid fire pistols which does a good amount of damage to be fair and those uh, it cripples as well so that's an added bonus there so once again stopping the enemies from getting to you so really good in terms of uh, staying alive um, especially if you're against like melee enemies so you can roll back use that and that cripples them uh, so that's quite effective and then you've got your number five which is magic bullet so hit up to four foes with a single shot inflicting confusion on each foe in addition the first target is stunned the second is dazed and the third is blinded so i actually really like this skill it's got quite a long cooldown with 25 seconds so do bear that in mind um but effectively yeah so you're going to stick a bunch of um effects on enemies a stunning one dazing one blinding another and putting confusion on all of them um so it you know it does it helps damage so it does some initial damage confusion helps damage the enemy as well as well as you know stuns and dazes and stuff are always useful and it bounces between multiple enemies so it's pretty good um so i like to link these together so if i'm starting a fight um what i'll probably number your number four so that takes like half a second takes a little bit of time to cast just very slightly so if you're entering a fight what you might want to do is you might want to use your number four um, and, and that will cast your phantasm and just as that's appearing and starting to shoot um, at your enemies you can always whack out your number five um, which is going to stun all of them and then you hit your number three which is going to channel a beam through all of the enemies so they're stunned so they're all bunched together use that and that's going to do a bunch of damage and once you've used those three abilities you'll find that uh, to be honest because you're you're basically the way it times your beam here will be hitting them about the same time as your phantasm will be shooting them and their health just goes down massively if you've like you know i'll be going through the stats in a bit if you've got all of your uh, um power set up and your your critical hits precision and everything the amount of damage it does is actually really good like i said you're not going to get quite as much damage as you will with the um swords but that's because it's melee and you take that risk of being close to the enemy so as a ranged option i do actually really like the uh pistol and scepter so do give that a go um but you know either one's good and let me know which one you prefer i'll be interested to see what you guys think of it um but yeah that's some pretty good options so that's everything for the weapons and weapon skills so next we're going to have a look at the healing utility and elite skills all right so now it's time to look at the healing utility and elite skills so first up the healing skill that i pretty much always pick so i don't really have many alternatives to this i like this healing skill especially because this build is going to have a decent amount of illusions going on. So this is Signet of the Aether. Um, and it has a 30 second cooldown. So the passive on this Signet is that you heal yourself whenever you summon an illusion. Which to be honest is really awesome. Um, that's one of the benefits of it. That's always going to sit on your bar um, unless it's on cooldown. So it's just a little bit of passive healing there whenever you summon an illusion. Which you'll be doing all the time. Like obviously we're looking at the weapon skills. Um, you'll summon illusions just by using your number one abilities, by using your phantasm abilities. Um, so it is really effective. And just to clarify, illusions are either phantasms or clones, both of them. Illusions covers both of them. And the active ability is obviously that you do a nice big chunk heal on yourself and reduce the recharge of phantasm skills. So this is why I particularly like this skill, to be honest. Is because um, not only do you get a nice respectable heal out of it which is what you want out of a healing skill you know you do need that um, but you also recharge your phantasm skills so if you use this signet um, you know cleverly then not only are you going to get a nice um, chunk of health back 
but you're also going to be able to um, get a recharge reduction on your phantasm skills as you can see it's a hundred percent recharge reduction as well which is awesome um, and obviously when we were looking at the weapon skills the phantasm skills that we were looking at were quite often um, some of the most powerful skills anyway so that's why that's definitely beneficial so do bear in mind obviously if you need to heal you need to heal just use it but if you try and time it to a certain extent um, when your phantasms are on recharge then you're going to get a nice benefit to your damage there as you'll be able to use it quickly you know you can use that then that then that straight away again so that's definitely going to be um, a benefit to you guys so um, with the utility skills um, I have a I haven't got like a set that you have to use on this you I've got a few that you can swap out and I will go through some alternatives but let's have a look I like to have a couple at least sort of two illusion um, skills there so giving me some options um, because we're going to want to keep our illusions up uh, which is going to link in with our shatter skills which I will go through um, in in a minute with the profession mechanics um, but first of all let's show you mantra of pain so mantra so chant the mantra of pain to damage your target and nearby foes inflict vulnerability on foes whose skills aren't active so you can do this from quite long range it hits the target uh, and up to five enemies around them um, it just does a decent amount of damage just instant damage uh, to them and if their skills aren't active it inflicts vulnerability so generally you can use this right at the start of a fight so if you're running over and you're just about to start using your skills, you can um, use this and it's going to do a decent amount of damage and inflict vulnerability. You can, uh, it's, it's like an ammo skill, so it's got two counts and the count recharges 10 seconds. So at the start of the fight, you could even double tap that um, to just start them off and damage them while they're all bunched together. Or you could stick it, you know, throughout the fight, you know, whenever it recharges, just smack your number seven. It's nice and instant, as you can see, just use it like that. Uh, so it is pretty effective you don't have to wait to cast it so you can just stick it in with all your other skills um, here i've got mirror images so summon two clones to attack your foe so this is quite a basic skill it you know it doesn't have uh, like a massive amount of damage um, but what it does is it breaks enemy targeting and it breaks stun so it's sort of a bit of a get out of jail card here i would say so if you're in a bit of trouble, maybe you're stunned, or maybe the enemies are all over you, you can use that. It's going to summon two clones. It's going to break the target and, so, and you're stunned. So it's going to get you out of the stun and give you an opportunity to sort of roll back out of the fight um, and, and you know heal yourself and maybe use some of your ranged abilities and, and keep a distance. So it's going to be pretty good. It's, it's, so it's a slightly defensive ability, but it can have... Um, offensive capabilities as well because you'll be able to shatter those clones to do a decent amount of damage as well so here um, on the number nine I've got phantasmal disenchanter to so summon an illusion that removes boons from targets it hits this attack deals increased damage against foes without boons so once again uh, some boon strip there and um, this can link in with your number six as well because it's another phantasm skill that you can um, replenish by using that. So you could use that and that and then use that to, to obviously replenish both of them. So it's good to have a phantasm on here. I'd recommend having an extra phantasm on here to make your signet of ether worthwhile. So as you can see, yeah, it's going to be stripping boons from the enemies. Um, it's going to remove fire boons, you can see, and you can use that from... Um, decent amount of range so that's an effective ability as well um, so like I said there are some alternatives that you can use on on these these are this is a pretty good setup here you know you've got a bit of everything um, clones for escaping from combat mantra of pain for doing some damage inflicting some vulnerability uh, phantasmal disenchanter for some boon strip so you've got a nice mixture there um, of abilities but a couple of alternatives um, that you could use You've got Phantasmal Defender, so you could use this instead of Phantasmal Disenchantment or, or, you know, alongside it. Um, and this is a more defensive ability. Uh, so this is Summon an Illusion that taunts your target 
and all nearby targets while blocking. When it finishes blocking, the illusion explodes, dealing increased damage for each attack it blocked. So as you can see, um, the, the main purpose of this is to taunt the enemies, um, so not just the target, all nearby targets as well. Um, so it gets the enemies off you, so it's a pretty good defensive ability there. But it's going to block, and it's going to block all the enemies' attacks, and then it's going to explode, and the more it blocks, the more damage it does. So if you've got a lot of then enemies attacking you, you can use this, and then it will be, not only will it be great from a defensive point of view, allowing you to, you know, um, get out of the fight and, and, and uh, regroup, it'll also do a decent amount of damage if it's done quite a lot of block there, as you can see. Maximum damage increase of 500%, so that could be quite effective, hitting up to 5 targets as well. So that's a good option as well that you can try out. And then there's a couple of other signets as well. Signet of Inspiration uh, can be pretty good. Um, this is good for extending boons, boon durations, as well as granting you a random boon every 10 seconds for your passive. So if you, if you want more boons on yourself, and potentially on teammates as well, um, then you can do that because that's going to extend the duration of boons on nearby allies as well. So in a group situation, they may thank you for that one. And then, you know, there's a couple, you can try some of the other mantras as well, um, like uh, Mantra of Resolve um, for cleansing conditions from yourself and nearby allies. So once again, in a group situation, that might be quite good. Um, and that's pretty much it for the um, ones that I would use as part of this build. But feel free to try out those different ones. Like I said, it's not set in stone, the utilities on this one. Utility skills are normally sort of the, the least are also sort of the most flexible you can be with them um, but i definitely make sure you have a at least one phantasm on there so i have a fan, phantasmal disenchanter phantasmal defender or both because then you can obviously benefit from the signet of ether to um you know recharge that as well so that can be quite effective so for your elite i've gone with time warp uh, so this is a really good skill actually so this is create an area that warps time granting you and your uh, you and your allies quickness while, while slowing enemies. So initially looking at it, you probably think it doesn't sound, you know, like a world beater of an elite skill. And I suppose it isn't to a certain extent, but it, it is very effective, especially in a group situation. But even solo, I would still probably go with this um, particular one. Uh, beware in a group, they will expect you to have this and they will moan at you if you're not casting it in a boss battle and stuff so in a group if you you know if you're doing group content to level up make sure you have time warp on your bar um, but even without it i think it's quite effective so for five seconds uh, the radius so it's ground targeted and everything in that radius for five seconds is going to have quickness which is uh, skills and actions are faster so basically you'll be able to attack and cast your skills faster therefore doing increased damage and all enemies are going to be slowed as well, which means their skills and actions are slower, so it does the opposite effect on enemies. So, so you, it's got a big radius as well, uh, so you want to make sure you stick it on you and your allies, um, and then you can start to cast your skills even quicker, as you can see. You're sort of um, going through them um, at a quicker pace, which is going to increase your damage, and then like I said, if you're in a group situation, it's going to increase everyone's damage. So if you're fighting a boss, you're all gathered around the boss and you dump that on top of the boss's head. Um, you and your allies are all going to have increased damage. Um, the damage output is going to go up. So that's going to be a really effective skill that you can use, to be honest. Uh, so I would recommend having that on your bar. It's not really any other ones there. It's, I would say that the, the Mesmer's not really got a massive range of great elite skills to choose from. So there's not really any other options I would go with. But I would say um, that Time Warp is definitely the one for me. And in a group situation, it is a definite must. Okay, so that's everything for the uh, healing utility and elite skills. So the next thing I want to have a look at are the um, armor and weapon stats. Okay, so now let's have a look at the weapon and armor stats for this build. So like most leveling builds, it's going to be power based. And let's have a little look at what we've got going. So on my armor, I've got the power, precision, and ferocity. So that's your normal berserker stats. So as always, your um, priority is going to be power. So if you're just starting leveling out, and you're just starting to see you know, one singular stat on your armor and weapons, go with power. 100% it, 
If it hasn't got power, then it's not worth it. Always go with the one with power. That's going to increase your damage, as you can see here. Increases your attack. All your skills are going to do more damage. So um, when you start leveling, power is definitely the um, priority. And next up, you probably have precision. When you start getting two stats on your gear, you can be flexible and, and go with something else. But precision, ferocity, those are all good options. But obviously, you know, if you're struggling a little bit and you're dying quite easily, you might want to add a little bit of vitality or toughness. Um, vitality is going to be your health, toughness, your armor. Because um, that can be quite good options as well. When you get to your free stat, it's generally going to be power, precision, and ferocity on most of your stuff. Um, depending on what weapons you go with, obviously I've got the ranged build here, or you've got the double swords for some melee. You might want some extra vitality if you're going with the double swords. Um, so what I would potentially recommend is that you go power, precision, ferocity on your armor and maybe your weapons as well, like I have. And then you can stick maybe, um, you know, something with some vitality, something with some toughness on your accessories uh, and maybe some gems um, in those accessories and, and jewelry as well that, that adds to that. Um, see what sort of health you're comfortable with. Because I quite often play with the fully ranged, I've actually gone pretty much all power precision frosty to in increase my damage as much as possible. So bear in mind the precision is your critical hit chance and frosty is your critical hit damage. So make sure you don't just, you know, chuck it all into precision or all into frosty because, you know, there's no point having loads of crit chance if you've got no crit damage and vice versa. There's no point having loads of crit damage if you only crit once every blue moon. So, you know, there isn't, you know, there's never an exact science on the stats you want to go with. Like I said, the main thing to remember is go with power. Um, that's always going to be your priority because um, you want to do more damage, kill the enemies quicker, and in turn, you know, that will make you slightly tankier as well because the enemies won't have a chance to do lots of damage to you. But yes, this build can be a bit of a glass cannon, especially if you're using um, dual swords and getting up close. So always bear in mind you can whack a bit of vitality onto your um, accessories and some over here if you need it. Um, and just see what you know you might be more comfortable around 20k health which you'll be able to get by st um, stacking some vitality on here but bear in mind whenever you do that you are going to be losing some damage so that is something that you know you should bear in mind um, so you know just see how you get on like I said if you're going completely ranged if you like this setup you know you can pretty much go fully berserker here and um, you know the amount of damage you do is ridiculous so you shouldn't worry too much you've got your clones here you can summon two clones you know if, if things get a bit tasty so you can escape from combat so to be honest you shouldn't have too much trouble staying alive because the enemies won't be able to get to you to do damage so by having extra vitality you probably it's probably a bit of a waste because you'll never be tested like that because you'll be able to keep the enemies away from you like this can stun them you know you've got plenty of ones like this which can cripple them you can knock them back with your number five evolutionary wave there. Uh, and then you can use your number six to bring back your phantasms, use them again. So to be honest, if you've got this setup, I'd probably say you don't need it. Um, and it, But if you've got the dual swords, um, so you're using melee and maybe you're not quite used to it, um, you know, evading and stuff like that and trying not to take damage, a little bit of extra vitality probably wouldn't go amiss. So that's what I would recommend on that. Um, you know, with regards to uh, your armor runes and your um your sigils for your weapons and everything you don't really have to worry about this too much while you're leveling to be honest because you'll be getting new weapons all the time so you no point wasting money on you know sigils and runes you just go with whatever's on the gear generally or if you pick one up like a gem or something you can sock it into the gear but you know if you get into level 80 and you're still like you know using this build you want to go um strength sigil of strength and sigil of force on probably both your weapon sets there um, because that's just gonna max out your damage so that's always a good option and then I've actually got a superior rune of strength uh, which is normally the best damage rune um, as as my um, six rune set on the armor which gives you power and might duration um, but you can always go with the um, superior rune of eagle or superior rune of the pack if you're in a group situation 
um, and they're all decent options just your normal for, for any power build to be honest nothing special um, but that's probably what I would recommend for that uh, so that's everything for the weapon and armor stats so now we're going to have a look at the traits and specializations okay so now time to look at traits and specializations so let's have a little look so you've obviously got five specializations to choose from and you can pick three um, but you might not have all of them yet if you're leveling up or if you're just getting started so your first specialization um, you're going to unlock at level 21 then your second one at level 45 and your third one not until level 71 so you might have a little while till you have to worry about that but it's something to bear in mind it does actually make a big impact so don't ignore this don't just sort of like grab it and sort of just stick it in a random thing it, it does matter and it does have actually quite a large effect on on your uh, damage output and everything like that and survivability and you know it makes your skills even better so you know it's good to pay attention and make sure you choose the right ones uh, because some options might be better for you depending on how you play so the first one i'd say to go with is always the illusion specialization so when you first hit level 21 i would start going um putting some of your skill points into the illusions tree and let's have a look why so first of all you've got your passives on this tree so you've got cry of pain which is shatter skill 2 inflicts more stacks of confusion for an increased duration that's down there i'm not going to the professional mechanics next uh, your next one is compounding power which is create an illusion Creating an illusion increases your outgoing damage and gives increased condition damage for a short duration. Uh, so, like I said, look, uh, it stacks up to five times. Just by summoning an illusion, you do more damage. So that's going to make you more powerful. And then Master of Misdirection, which is Shatter Skills, gain recharge reduction. So 15% recharge reduction on your Shatter Skills. So this is going to link in um, with your illusions. Obviously, everyone we've been through, you're going to be having, you know, free illusions up most of the time uh, and shattering them. Uh, so this is going to make that more effective in terms of the choices we make let's have a look at the first one so we've got persistence of memory which is when a phantasm becomes a clone it transfers its boons to you so once again this is um you know the mesmer's really good at putting boons on yourself so when a phantasm finishes um doing its skill like we said it becomes a clone and at that point um, because if we chosen this it's going to give us its boons as well so that just means we're going to have more boons stacking up on us here um, as we're going to have phantasms turning into clones all the time so that's really cool next up we've got phantasmal haste which is phantasm spawn with quickness gain quickness when you create a phantasm uh, so quickness means skills and actions are faster uh, it, quickness you know cannot be overstated is really um, really powerful um, it literally means you, your damage output is going to go up massively because you're just going to be able to cast everything quicker. Uh, you can see when you create a phantasm, uh, you're going to get quickness for one and a half seconds, which doesn't sound like much, but it is really effective. And your phantasm quickness has uh, is, is got that there as well. So that just means your phantasm is going to be casting it a lot quicker, uh, which is pretty awesome because the phantasms do a lot of damage. So that will be quite effective as well. And then finally we got Phantasmal Force. So Phantasms deal increased strike damage for each stack of might you have. Gain might when your Phantasms become clones. So once again, um, Phantasms are going to be coming, becoming clones quite a lot. You're going to gain might and you're going to deal, uh, your Phantasms are going to deal more damage for each stack of might you have. So it all just links in. Um, it just means the more you use your illusions, the more you use your Phantasms, the more your damage is going to build up. Um, so this is why I said always make sure you know your weapon skills they've all got phantasms on the bar and it's always good to have at least one phantasm on your um, on your utility skills as well maybe even two because we're buffing it so much here to get that maximum effectiveness maybe you do want to stick that phantasmal defender in there after all uh, and give that a go so with your second specialization you want to go with dueling um, so what I'm suggesting at the moment is not really optional. Definitely put Domination last. That one's not as important. But definitely Illusions and Dueling is your first two. Um, to be honest, if you're using this build, I wouldn't really go any other way. Um, and this is obviously unlocked to level 45, so you might have a little way to go. But it's always good to know um, what you're heading towards. So let's have a look at the passives on Dueling. You've got Critical Infusion, which is gain vigor when delivering a critical hit. Obviously, if we're using full Berserker gear, you're going to have a lot 
of critical hits because you're gonna your precision is gonna be really high. You might even have a sort of like over 50% crit chance. So you know more than every other hit is gonna be critical. So you're gonna be sticking vigor on yourself, which is increased endurance uh, regen, which means you can dodge around more. So once again, uh, buffing yourself there. Uh, sharper images, so illusions inflict bleeding on critical hits. So whenever your illusions um, yeah, have critical hits, which they will quite a lot, um, your stack of bleeding on the enemies just increases the damage. And you've got Master Fencer. So gain fury when you strike an enemy whose health is below the threshold. Um, so the health threshold is only 75%. Uh, fury increases your crit chance by 20%. So that's actually really effective if you think about it. I mean, you're going to be hitting enemies below 75% health all the time um, and you get five seconds of 20% crit chance increase um, so if you've already got 50 now you've got 70% you're going to be critting all the time and that's why you also want to put ferocity on your gear as well because that's going to increase your crit damage so this is why you're just going to be absolutely destroying the enemies uh, and it's going to be really effective so I like that so with regards to our choices uh, first of all we've got phantasmal fury which is your phantasms have fury which means they have a 20% critical chance increase. Um, and, you know, once again, see, same as up here, we're buffing our Phantasm, so that's why they're going to do so much damage. So you really want to make sure you hit those correctly. Um, next up, this depends on um, what you're using, so which, you know, weapon set you decided to go with. Um, obviously, if you've gone with a Septon Pistol, uh, you want to choose a different option. If you have gone Septon Pistol, then you might want to consider on the first line going with this one, which is Duelist Discipline, which is pistol attacks from you and your illusions have a chance to cause bleeding, interrupt, uh, interrupting foe, recharges pistol skills. So that buffs the pistol quite a lot. So that might be a bit of a choice to make between those two if you have gone pistol. I sometimes do go with that um, to make that more effective because your pistol skills, both of them are actually really effective. So by making them better, um, you're definitely going to be increasing your damage output. Um, so here, so we said we've got Fences Finesse, which is gain a stacking ferocity effect when you or one of your illusions strikes with a one-handed sword or a spear, reduces recharge on sword and spear skills. So this buffs your sword, so obviously if you're using dual swords um, as your weapon set here, you're definitely going to want to go with that. Um, that's going to make that even better. Um, but if, you know, if you're not, if you've gone with Pistol Scepter, then maybe one of these other ones... Shatter skill 2 inflicts blindness can be effective or reflect projectiles after a successful evasion. Um, that might be a pretty good option as well. Um, so go with one of those if you're obviously not using a sword. Finally, you've got superiority complex, which is your critical hits deal more damage. Critical hit damage against disabled foes or foes below the health threshold is further increased. Um, so once again, critical, um, critical hit damage increased by 15%. Uh, and an extra 10% if they're below 50% health. So 25% extra critical damage if someone's below 50% health. You know, that is excellent. Definitely go with that. It's going to make you a lot more powerful. So for your third and final specialization, uh, we've gone with Domination. Um, so this one, like I said, it's not as important as the others, but I definitely recommend going with this one as your third. Uh, like I said, you're not going to unlock it to your level 71, but once you do, I'd say Domination is your best choice. Uh, your passives on this are Illusion of Vulnerability, which is inflict vulnerability when you interrupt a foe. Um, so obviously if you've got uh, skills that are going to be interrupting, uh, you're sticking vulnerability on them as well, so it just makes that better. Um, you've got Dazzling, which is dazing or stunning a foe also applies vulnerability. Um, so some of these skills, like for example using your number 5, that's going to stick vulnerability on everyone as well, which is really good. And then you've got Fragility which is deal increased strike damage for each stack of vulnerability on your target. So that obviously links in with these. It just means you're going to do even more damage when you've got those stacks of vulnerability on them. Uh, so with your choices, I've gone with Empowered Illusions, which is quite an obvious one, which is Illusions deal increased strike damage of 15%. So that's just going to make your illusions more powerful. So as you're going to have loads of illusions up all the time, that's a really good option, solid option to go with. You've got Egotism, which is deal increased strike damage to foes with a lower health percentage than you. To be honest, I would say most of the time, pretty much everyone you fight is going to have a lower health percentage than you. So that's almost a permanent 10% damage increase. So that is a must. Definitely go with that. And then finally, you've got Vicious Expression, 
which is you and your illusions deal increased strike damage to foes without boons. Disabling a foe removes boons from them. So as you saw, we've got a fair amount of boon strip on this. So this is quite effective. 15% damage increase if you don't have any boons for you and your illusions. So that's going to be quite a lot. And then when you disable a foe, like for example, use one of these skills, uh, you're going to be um, removing boons from as well, which is, you know, extra as well. So that's all of your specializations. Illusions, dueling, domination, I'd recommend in that order. You could do dueling first if you wanted to, but no, I would say do it in that order and stick to it. That's really good. Um, so that's everything for the specializations and traits. So the next thing I'm going to do is have a look at the profession mechanic. Okay, so I've flirted around it enough now. Let's talk about the profession mechanics. So as you probably know, the main profession mechanic on the Mesmer is the ability to summon illusions and then shatter them. We've obviously looked at all of the skills and how all of these put together is going to summon a bunch of illusions. So you're always going to have a few active at any one time. Uh, so now we just want to have a look at the shatter side of it and how that plays in uh, with your damage and everything like that. So shatter skills basically destroy all of your active clones and have an effect so your first one mind rack destroys all clones and damages enemies within a radius uh, the more clones you have active the more effective it is same with all of them so this one does more damage uh, your f2 is going to cause confusion to enemies your f3 is going to um, daze enemies and your f4 is going to um, gain distortion and destroy all your clones um, which is going to make you immune to conditions and damage for a short period of time um, so the general power builds with the mesmer pretty much you're only going to be using um, your f1 and if your f1 is not available then you can use your f2 uh, there is actually a um, a trait available which makes this an ammo skill so you have two um, so that could be an option uh, if you find that you're, you're often um, trying to use it and it's not there. It's only got a 10 second cooldown, so you've got to wait for free illusions to come back. Um, so we'll see how we get on. So what I'd recommend, um, so you just mix this in with your general combat uh, to do as much damage as possible. So as and when you're using your skills, um, when they become uh, clones, uh, your illusions, they'll, they'll sort of show here. So you'll have one full up if you've got one, two or three illusions. Um, because obviously when you've got three illusions active it gives you the maximum amount of damage I would recommend that you always wait until you have three and as soon as you have three active clones that's when you want to smack F1 uh, which is going to do a bunch of damage so all of your clones are basically going to kamikaze run at your target explode and do a bunch of damage it's useful as a finisher as well um, because when your target dies your clones will die as well um, so you kind of want to make sure you utilize that before the clones just die naturally because then that's damage wasted um, so I would say always do that so as and when you're using your skills obviously you're going to be using your phantasm skills which are going to do that I mean for example here your number one is just going to summon a clone this one summons two clones so that's quite useful as that that fuels this quite a lot so whenever this reaches free smack f1 and that will do damage and you'll find that you, you know you may think well I don't want to do that because I'll be left undefended without any clones. I think you'll find that they come back pretty quick. So for example, uh, if you use your F1 and they're all gone, if you've got your number eight um, active, you just smack that, uh, smack your number eight, that's two clones. You can do your, um, you know, if you have the scepter, you can do your number one skill on there. That's another clone, then you've got three already and you want to hit F1 again and use mind rack on your enemies so it's actually a really effective um tool you might think um you know uh, if you're just starting out and using a mesmer you may think you know well i want my clones to be active i don't want to be destroying them um like i said because you get them back so quickly it is something you want to utilize and the damage is really good as well like i said as a finisher as well if they've got you know 25 percent health or something like that pretty much any enemy you press f1 and you've got three clones they're going to run at it and they're just going to kill it in one uh, so that's going to be a, an effective skill so it's just another way of making sure you maximize your damage output you just mix your shatter skills in there with your normal skills 
and uh, make sure you don't waste your clones and that you always use your shatters when they're available so just to clarify whenever that hits free smash f1 and you're going to increase your damage there um, and you know like you saw when we were doing the specializations we've got we've got some traits that make this better and increase the uh, uh, decrease the cooldown and everything like that um, so um, there are other options as well you can use to um, you know buff this even more so if you really find that you're liking um, your shatter skills like I said there is one that makes that an ammo skill so you have two charges that can be really effective if you if you find that you don't have an F1 available um, so just make sure you utilize that as much as possible okay so that covers the profession mechanics for the Mesmer uh, so now let's just do a quick build summary before finishing up okay so let's just have a quick recap of the leveling build before we wrap this up um, so weapon wise as we saw we've got the great sword um, which is a must as your main weapon and then uh, you've got a couple of options here you can choose the dual swords uh, for maximum damage but melee vulnerability um, we said you can swap that out and have scepter and pistol which means that overall you're a fully ranged character so you don't have to get too close to the enemy which does mean that you don't have to spend so much time dodging and healing and you can just focus on doing damage but your overall damage output will generally be a little bit lower so you just have to make your mind up on that it's an important choice to make uh, with regards to your healing utility in elite we've got signet of ether which is a definite as your healing skill we're a bit more flexible on the utilities there was another phantasm here in phantasmal defender which would be a good option or maybe potentially a different signet or a different mantra to see what you prefer um, with the elite time warp to be honest there wasn't really much else that was worth doing time warp I would say go with as it buffs you quite well especially um, if you're going into like a uh, fight an elite or a boss or something like that it's definitely gives you a competitive edge it is a must if you're doing group content um, so if you're doing dungeons to level or, or playing with friends definitely do time warp you may even be shouted at for not having it on your bar and utilizing it during boss fights so uh, yeah make sure you've got that on there as well with the armor stats, we pre uh, predominantly went with power, precision, ferocity. Um, as you're leveling, just prioritize power. That's the main thing. And then when you can start getting precision and ferocity in on your gear as well, then you want to do that so that you can do as much critical as possible. And like I said, like with anything, um, if you're using the melee option um, with the dual swords, you might want to add a little bit of vitality potentially by sticking um, it on your... Uh, jewelry and accessories down here to give you maybe sort of like 19 20 000 health i wouldn't recommend putting all of your stats with like a vitality one because um, really precision frosty and power you're going to need to up your damage so bear in mind that the best defense is a good offense one might say so um, really if you're killing your enemies quicker then you're not going to worry too much about it and if you do own for the fully ranged option along with clones to protect you to be honest you shouldn't have to worry too much about your health um, and you can just focus on doing damage uh, and like with this guy i've gone full power precision ferocity which i would recommend um, so you'll just be able to melt through the enemies before they even get a chance to hurt you which is pretty awesome with regards to the specializations and traits we went illusions dueling domination uh, you can see the setup there um, in that order illusions first level 21 jewel in level 45 and then moving on to domination at level 71 so by the time you get to level 80 you'll have this all maxed out and then when we spoke briefly about the profession mechanics as well uh, which was basically just stick your f1 mind rack in there whenever you get free clones on there um, kill the clones do as much damage as possible and um, yeah that's the thing we just want to kill the enemies as quickly as we can doing as much damage as possible okay so that pretty much covers everything uh for the build there um obviously if you have any more questions stick them in the comments below the mesmer is my absolute favorite class on here so hopefully i'll be able to answer any questions that you have um and obviously if you think my build sucks then you know tell me and, and tell me what you think would be better but um hopefully this is helpful for you guys if you're leveling up because i know you know lots of videos generally just about end game builds so hopefully this will help you get your mesmer up to scratch so that you can move on and start getting elite specs and stuff like that okay so thanks for watching guys i'm going to leave you with a um bit of combat 
um, demonstration uh, that you can watch, just showing you know how this works in combat. Um, but yeah, thanks for watching. Like and subscribe to be kept up to date, and I will see you later. Good.